Hello and welcome to Wisdom Bites. Hope you're well. Thank you once again for joining us. Very much appreciated. And in today's packed program, while we're waiting for the Bitcoin price to wind down towards the lower 30s, if it indeed goes down there, I'm going to take the opportunity to have a look at the wider markets, especially the gold market, the silver market, and the wider stock markets as well. But before I begin, the usual polite reminder, everything in this video is for educational purposes only. Nothing should be taken as financial advice. Please do your wider research before making any investment decisions. So with that out of the way, let's get cracking straight away. And in yesterday's video, I got a comment from, from Raluca Ratiu. I hope I've pronounced that properly. If I haven't, please accept my apologies. And Raluca says, Bitcoin is on the 600 simple moving average and it never went under it and it shows great support on it. And it just did a higher low and I don't think we go further down. This is the bottom. So thank you for that comment, Raluca. So we'll have a look at that and see if that gives us any clue as to where Bitcoin is going. So here it is. As you can see, the length is 600, as Raluca says, and it's this green moving average here on the daily chart. And as Raluca points out, we're holding support right on this line. Does this provide a clue? Well, Everything is worth looking at, but if we look historically at this moving average, we have found support here, a little bit here, support and resistance here. And of course it fell down below the COVID-19 situation here. But again, it chopped around that level there. So it's quite an important moving average. It's not one I normally look at. And if we go back in history, it doesn't seem to have a lot of relationship with the price except where it comes down towards it and it provides a certain amount of support and resistance on it. So certainly worth a look at. And if we have a quick closer look at where we are now here, the last time we came down in this downfall towards the 32,900 level here, you can see the bodies of the candle came and found support on it. So this moving average was quite relevant in that move down. And then we've now gone obviously above it and found support once again here. Those with the discerning eye may be able to see that there is a possibility of the formation of a head and shoulders here. So it may well be that we jump from where we are now towards a higher level, maybe 41, 42, as I mentioned in yesterday's video. So we'll see what happens, but certainly it's the makings of an interesting next few days. And I'll keep my eye on this 600 simple moving average on the daily chart. But certainly we're finding support on it at the moment. And thank you to Raluca for pointing that out. A quick look at the one hour chart. Something very interesting. We're getting a down sloping channel forming here. And currently we're just weaving in and out. And we've just made out another lower low here. So we're making a series of lower lows and lower highs all along here since we hit that $45,000 mark recently. And as I said in yesterday's video, that it may well be we have a rally to the upside towards the 42, 43,000. But before we can do that, we've just bounced off this support line of this channel here. And we're moving towards the top end of the resistance point. What we need to do is to come up to this level here and break this resistance point here to create a higher high from here to there. And then I think we might get a run up to around about these levels, around 41, maybe 42 up to here, 43 even, before the price has to decide which way to go. Certainly the trajectory seems to be down and we just might have another relief rally to the upside. So we'll wait and see, but this is quite interesting, the developments here. The current price is at 37,390. A quick look at the BLX chart on the monthly time frame. Something very interesting. I've shown you this chart many times in the past. And basically, we've got this very long term trend line, this red line here, as you can see. And it goes back all the way back down to 2013. So you're talking about nine years. And on this line, you can see it's provided extremely strong support here, even there, the COVID 19 situation, further along here. And currently, it looks like it may well provide the salvation for the current price here. So currently at that point where we are, it's around about $28,000. And obviously it's a rising trend line. So if we don't hit it now, maybe next month it'll be slightly higher at 29 maybe. But certainly 
that's providing quite a lot of support. And it's only once that we've actually broken through that. And that was the COVID-19 situation that we had. And that was a black swan event. So unless we have a black swan event here, this chart would suggest that we would have bottomed out at around about the 28 at the very, very most. Because I know most people are now predicting a price fall down to even 20,000 and 14,000. And obviously that is a possibility and I've mentioned it myself, but certainly I don't believe that it will go down to those levels. Because if we have a look at the weekly chart and we have a look at the holy grail of support lines, and that is the 200 weekly simple moving average, the green line here. And this green line, if you look historically, it goes back all the way to 2014. And we've only hit this line once here, twice, three times, and the last time was the COVID-19 situation back in 2020. And the current support on that line is 20,000. So this would suggest the maximum fall the current price would have here would be to these support lines. And we've never closed really below this green line on a weekly basis. We might have a little touch here. We may have closed a little bit below there, but certainly if you're looking for the best opportunity to buy Bitcoin at the lowest price possible, that would be your holy grail of buying the lowest price of Bitcoin and getting in there. Obviously, it's an upward moving trend line, so it's getting higher and higher and higher. So the longer we leave it, the higher the price is going to be. So any talk of 14,000 seems to be a bit premature. And if we have a look at gold, and if we start back in 2008 here, in the last recession, we can see when the stock markets collapsed here, gold went on a run of around about 180% for three years up to 2011. And since then, it's been basically in this bear market. But since 2015, it has been creating higher lows and higher highs. So it looks like gold is certainly moving in the right direction. And maybe this is a clue that the stock markets are about to have a crash anytime in the next few months, maybe towards the end of the year. But certainly it's showing bullishness if we have a quick close look at this price action over here. So we've had this rising market since 2015. We're now in this symmetrical triangle here. We're winding up and we actually broke out of this. And as I've mentioned many times, when you break out of a diagonal trend line, that's really not the time to buy. That's the first sign of a two sign signal before you get in on this. Because as you can see, once it broke the diagonal line, it came back to retest the support line here again. It's obviously broken back into the symmetrical triangle. It's making another attempt and it did break out of it, came back at support, and this time it has actually come back. This was the first sign breaking this level here that we're on a bull trend with the gold market. And that was at around about the 1870s level. As you can see, we've got one big candle that's just gone through last week. And if you're looking for further confirmation, if you look left here, the next horizontal support line is here at around about the 1920 level. And currently we're finding some resistance at that point. So people waiting for confirmation of this bull run here would do well to wait until we break this with a daily candle at least, above the 1915, 1916 level. And then the next level from that will be these levels here at 2075. So gold is certainly on a bit of an upward trajectory here. And this seems to be showing an inverse relationship with Bitcoin because it was around about here that the Bitcoin price started to move up. And as you can see, the gold price went down. A quick look at silver. And once again, if we look at the previous recession back in 2008, while the stock markets collapsed, the silver price rose by 450%. So when the stock markets collapse, gold and silver come into their own. And as you can see, silver outperforms gold. And just like gold, it had a bear market all the way down here. But recently, in the last four or five years, it's been creating higher highs and higher lows here. And what we're forming here is a bull flag, as you can see here. And it does look to me as though once we break out from here to the upside, the potential price for silver currently is at 23.9. But if you take the price from down here to the top where the bull flag started, that's 166%. So if you take the 166% from any break around here, that would take it to around about $68. So that's the potential price 
for silver. So if the markets collapse around us, like the Dow Jones or the UK market, silver would certainly be one to get into, along with gold. And if we have a look at the junk bond market, these were our two levels here. We broke that, and that was our first sign that we need to keep our eye on this market. And it broke our critical level here at 83.7. And then we put down this next support line here, this red zone here. And we're just holding onto that. But if you just look at the trajectory of this, it doesn't all go well. And we must keep our eye on this because this is usually the first sign before the stock markets crash. This is the Dow Jones index. And our critical line here is this green dotted line here at 33,000. If we break that, there is a very strong chance that we're going to have a cascade down. We may find some support at these levels, but with the interest rates looming, depending on how aggressive the USA government goes with the interest rates, will determine how much we fall down here. We are getting towards critical levels, so we must keep a sharp eye on these markets here with the junk bond market and the Dow Jones index. Finally, coming back to Bitcoin, we always need to keep the bigger picture with this weekly chart here. And that is that we're still running in between this channel here. There's this diagonal support line here, which we haven't broken yet, as we saw from here in June, July time where we hit the 28,000 and currently at the 32,900 that we hit back in January. It may well be we find support here at around about 33 again, but failing that, the horizontal support is still at 32. And as we've seen with the other major moving averages, this looks like the line in the sand really now. This looks like very, very strong support. So this would be a great point of dollar cost averaging into this market, if not already around here. So this is where I would be looking for a very big swing trade anywhere in the $32,000, $33,000 mark. And should it fall from there, then this would be basically, for me, an all-in situation here, around 30. Okay, so we'll leave it there. Thank you once again for your time. And if you found value in the video, then please do remember to like and subscribe and to turn on the notification bell. And if you've got any comments, questions, or suggestions, leave them in the comments below. Until the next time, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.